Well, hello everybody, welcome back to another Because Geeks Losing video. In this one, we'll be enjoying a bit of a blast from the past by going through all of the season 8 spoilers that we knew about and that I discussed in my sleuthing series to see what they actually meant in the end. We saw a lot of them play out on the screen as we expected, but there were also a lot of major ones that we didn't see play out at all. And we even saw a picture of one of the most major spoilers ever for season 8, and some of us didn't even know it. So, as always, let's get right into it. You're now watching Because Geek. But quickly before we get started, I did want to say that we still have our Game of Thrones book available. I know a big part of the community fell out of love with Game of Thrones after the last season, but think of this book as um, a way to reminisce the good times. Me and a few other awesome YouTubers, plus two other experts listed on the back here, each wrote one chapter for this book where we talk about how Game of Thrones affected pop culture. I will leave a link in the description with the list of chapters, you know, the table of contents, to see if you would be interested in this book. My chapter was number three, and it's all about the Game of Thrones sleuthing phenomenon. I get into the whole story of how it started, how it evolved, and how I was able to do all of this detective work. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, I think you would love that chapter, and I would really appreciate it if you guys bought one of these books. We have it in a softcover, um, audiobook, and ebook versions. All links in the description, of course. So thank you so much in advance if you get one of these, and I will also leave a link in the description with some information for Con of Thrones, because I will be having a sleuthing panel at Con of Thrones, so if you're interested in that and going to Con of Thrones, just, uh, yeah, come watch that panel. It's gonna be great. Why did I say it like that? But yes, uh, let's start the video now. The sets. There were two major sets built for Season 8, and one of them was Winterfell. Well, there's already been two other Winterfell sets, but for obvious reasons, they had to make it way bigger this year. And we saw many pictures of its construction over the early months of Season 8 production. This new amazing looking set was the source of one of the earliest major spoilers that we saw. But this spoiler is one of those that never happened. Winterfell never burned down, as clearly as it seemed in this video. And this is definitely a huge fire and not just yellow lights, okay? Belfast Live posted an article saying that a local had called the fire department because they thought it was an actual fire, but they were informed that it was an intentional fire for a battle sequence. As you can see though, the fire is inside, and I thought further proof of this was that the fire seemed to be coming out of the windows here, but then I realized that those are just torches or something because there's no windows there. But still, the fire was inside, which doesn't match up with much of what we saw in episode 3. The closest thing was the lighting of the trench, or the burning debris from Viserion's fire. But the trench was outside, and the fire that was inside wasn't nearly as big or as bright as this. Who knows, maybe they needed to do this in order to capture that orange tint lighting that we saw in the episode. Whatever it was, the point is that it convinced us all of the fact that Winterfell would burn down to the ground. And we created many theories based around this that, of course, did not come true. I personally thought they were burning the place down to kill all of the whites that were inside. But nah, Winterfell was still very inhabitable immediately after this. Another event that many people were absolutely convinced would happen, and never happened either, was the Golden Company attacking Winterfell. And let me tell you, I got so annoyed that people are throwing this around as fact, because that was the only reason I accepted that it would happen after being completely opposed to the idea for so long. I really don't know how it turned into a fact. I tried tracing it back and all I was able to find is that it might have been a combination of various sources saying the same thing. And whether it was intentionally spread by sneaky members of the production team, or if it was spread by a fake leaker, or if it was just everyone's collective wrong assumption, we'll likely never get a clear answer. But it's interesting to think about how one simple rumor can gain so much traction. If you'd like to know more about this leak, I made an in-depth video that you can check out over here. Now the next set we should talk about is Machermorn. Hope I said that right. This huge green screen set was spied on a lot from a distance, which provided us with many interesting pictures and videos of what was being filmed there. And again, some of it did happen and some of it didn't. One of the most exciting things I saw there was the Dothraki riders wearing green suits under their Dothraki clothes, which to me pointed to them being whites, as we have seen many times before that this is what white extras wear. And yes, now I know it meant something completely different, I'll get to it. 
It's something that I was aware of, but I decided to ignore it because of my excitement about Dothraki White. Not only because it's exciting by itself, but also because it would tie a bunch of other stuff together. Like this very cool rumor that we heard, claiming that Melisandre would raise the dead and use them against the Night King. I believe these dead would be the Dothraki because we got a bunch of pictures of dead soldier body props and there were basically no Dothraki corpses anywhere. So I thought that, of course, they wouldn't be there if Melisandre had raised them to fight again. But that rumor about her turned out to be fake, and a super quick shot in the documentary confirmed the possibility that I was ignoring, which was the fact that these were supposed to be riderless Dothraki horses coming back from the suicidal charge against the Whites. You need to have an actual person sitting on the horse to make sure that the horse rides to where you want it to ride to, and if they're wearing a green suit they can remove the rider in post-production. Another thing that we theorized on more than we should have was the three flaming sword riders. After having watched the episode, I realized that these were likely just three random Dothraki riders charging at the army of the dead after Melisandre lit their Arax, and they just later multiplied them in post-production to make the army. Or so I thought at first, because the documentary does show a whole bunch more Dothraki with lit Arax being filmed. So the first three writers could have just been meant for a different shot and not just to be multiplied later. But yeah, so the whole theory of the left-handed writer being Jamie was thrown directly in the garbage. The same person that spread that Melisandre raising the dead rumor also said that they had filmed Jamie dying in Brienne's arms and that it would happen at King's Landing in episode 4. Apparently, a bunch of scenes filmed in front of this green screen were supposed to be part of the King's Landing battle, but so far it seems like all of that was fake news as well. Unless they were mixing up that green screen set with the green screen that was right next to the King's Landing set. Still, Jamie didn't die in Brienne's arms, which is something that we were super excited to see. Can I have a talk with this person that was spreading these rumors? I have one or two very angry things to say to this person. Plus a bitch slap. But yeah, yeah, you've got to deal with disappointment like this when you're doing this type of stuff, it's part of the job. It's always a challenge to differentiate between real rumors and fake rumors, because they're usually very 50-50. And a lot of the times, those fake rumors do sound very realistic, like they make a ton of sense, so there's no reason not to believe them. It's funny though, when the things that don't make sense are the ones that actually end up happening. At this same set, we saw someone fighting with a flaming sword, which was definitely Beric, we saw a row of cloaked people walking towards the camera, which was confusing because we were wondering if they were white since they were just walking in the middle of the night, but they didn't look like regular whites either, especially with those cloaks on. I mean, they could have just been turned, but now I realize that we didn't see any scene like this. At first I thought it might have been part of the funeral scene when they were approaching the pyres, but that was filmed during the day and at the Winterfell set. I also wonder if it was the last scene with the wildlings when they were walking north, but that was also filmed during the day. The white walkers here were not wearing cloaks, so this wasn't it either. It could have been part of when the Night King raised the dead for Jon, but the documentary also showed that this was filmed at the Winterfell set. Who knows, it could have easily been another scene that they cut out as well. Miguel Saposchnik, the director of this episode, recently revealed in a podcast that there was a lot of stuff that they had to cut out, unfortunately. But you guys let me know if you think of anything else. The last thing of note here was this fight that was captured on video, which really seemed like living humans would be fighting living humans at some point during the battle. But now I'm thinking that it may have just been actors or extras fooling around with their swords while they were on break or something. Other than that, we saw pictures of a bloody Winterfell with corpses lying all around, and yes, we definitely did see that. Now the second major set that was built for Season 8 was King's Landing. We knew from Watchers on the Wall's reliable sources very early on that they were building this because the city would be destroyed by Dragonfire. We just didn't know if it would be Daenerys or the Night King. It was clear that the gate would be breached in a very aggressive way because of the way that they built it. And we also knew that there would be scorpions put on top of those towers and that they would be burnt to a crisp as well. There was still enough reason to believe that the Night King would cause all of this damage. But the more you look into the spoilers, the more you realize how clear it was that it would be Daenerys, and how much in denial some of us were. Mind you, it was a denial that made sense, but still, it's fair to point it out. 
This particular tower here seemed to be important, like some sort of centerpiece, and now we know that it was the Bell's Tower, what the actual episode was named after. Who would have guessed? Here, I believe that they were getting ready to film Missandei's beheading, based on what we saw in the documentary. This right here is the platform where she, Cersei, and the rest of them stood while talking to Tyrion and Danny. Daenerys' army being at the gates of King's Landing is also something that we already knew, but we thought that her army would attack the gate, not just stand in front of it. There was one fan who got really close to this set while they were filming a scene at the gate, and other than taking this picture, they said that there were Lannister soldiers on the towers, and that there were people on the ground at the gate screaming. They also said that it seemed to be living humans and not whites. So it was very easy to believe that this would be an attacking army of living humans, and the only army it could be was Daenerys's. But looking back at the spoiler after having watched the episodes, I now believe that what they were filming there was more than likely the small folk trying to get into the city. Daenerys's army did scream at the gate, or near the gate, but they were going straight through it. And that also happened after there were no Lannister soldiers on the towers because Daenerys had already burned them all. A super quick shout out to my latest patrons. JB Reed, Lancinator, Memoirs of a Music Freak, AB Eterno, Don Kittle, Daniela, Lindy Loeb, Princess Arya Buttercup, Persephone Jones, and Dimitar Metodiev. Thank you guys so much for your support. Locations Other than major sets, we were aware of Game of Thrones filming at specific locations, with the most popular being the Roman Amphitheater in Seville, Spain, also known as the Dragon Pit, the same set that they used for Season 7. And there were so many conflicting rumors about this location, it was really hard to be sure of anything. Tons of actors were spotted here, but it seemed like this time they were being shown off on purpose, which was very suspicious. Especially when we saw pictures of the actors who played Jacken and the Waif being there with the rest of the cast. That just didn't seem right. So we were sure that not every actor we saw there would be in the scenes that they would film there. We also knew that they were filming some parts of their documentary here, so that made things a bit harder as well. And as to what they were actually filming there, well, it's pretty obvious now that it was that scene at the Dragon Pit in the last episode. We did kind of suspect that it would be in the last episode because we saw David and Dan there, and we didn't see any other directors, so we knew that much. But again, the rumors that we were getting from that location were very confusing. We heard that some of the actors' stunt doubles would be there, which kind of pointed to an action sequence, but I remember thinking that it was stunt doubles like Sansa's and Tyrion's who you wouldn't expect to see in a fight scene, so they were probably just body doubles. And also the fact that Sansa, Tyrion, Davos, and a whole bunch of other non-fighting characters would be there was telling me that this was not a fight scene, but that was the rumor that we were receiving. We kept hearing that the Dragon Pit scene was not going to be a coronation ceremony like many of us expected, but part of the King's Landing battle. So something in there just did not fit quite right, and we just didn't know what to believe. We also heard that it could have been a trial, which it was, but apparently Tyrion was going to die during this trial, which he didn't. So yeah, I'm starting to think that a lot of these rumors were spread on purpose, just to throw us off. But one of the most confusing things about this location was that people couldn't agree on whether Kit had filmed scenes or not. They said that he visited the set, but they were also saying that he didn't film anything. But after season 8 ended, we got this picture that explained everything. He was simply being a makeup kit. <laughs> Was that a bad joke? I'm sorry. <laughs> just <laughs> but yeah, so Kit was on set, but definitely just fooling around and not filming anything. 100% meant to just throw us off. It feels weird being here and not actually filming. We, of course, did spot many actors that were part of this scene. Like, I'm gonna say their character names instead of their actor names so it's easier for everyone to get this information. Tyrion, Sansa, Bran, Brienne, Sam, Arya, Davos, Gendry, Grey Worm, Robin Aaron, and Yara. Although people also spotted Varys, Jaime, Cersei, the Night King, and as I said, Jacken and the Waif. We do know thanks to the documentary that at least the Night King, Jacken and the Waif were there just to throw people off. We have the Waif coming in because so many people think that Arya is dead and the Waif killed her. 
We have Jockin, who's also another House of Black and White character. And then we have the Night King here, so they won't know what's happening. It'll be a big surprise no matter what. And we also knew that Jamie and Cersei had left early, so that all makes sense now. However, there was a huge clue in the actors that were missing, more specifically Daenerys and Missandei. It did cross all of our minds that they might be dead at that point, but it was so hard to believe. Especially since we heard that Jon was there, so we were like, how could Jon survive and not Danny? This is why we decided to come up with other theories instead, like Daenerys was just off doing something else with Missandei. Like, maybe she was finally having that baby that we thought was so strongly foreshadowed. But none of it really made sense until the episodes were aired and we found out the horrible truth. Oh, and by the way, we also didn't believe that someone had spotted Tobias Menzies, also known as Edmure Tully, at the airport with the rest of the cast. But hey, guess it was him. Now let's talk about Balintoy Harbor and the Cushendon Caves. These were two locations that had a really hard to guess purpose. I was able to put together that Euron, Jamie, and Varys would have something to do with these locations because they were photographed together at a restaurant in the same area. And again, now that I have all of the answers, having watched the actual episodes and behind the scenes footage, I realized that the Cushandon cave was where they were filming that fight scene between Euron and Jamie. Instead of it being an escape route that I thought Arya might use with Yara and Davos to save some of the small folk. Varys was of course not part of this scene, but he was more than likely one of the actors filming at Balintoy. The report we heard from that location was that it was a night shoot with a few characters around a fire on the beach. I assumed that it would be an ironborn scene because that's usually what they film at Balintoy Harbor, but I believe it was Varys' execution, since the description of what was being filmed there plus the look of the location matches that scene completely. Plus, as I said, Conleth Hill was spotted around the area. And while we're on the topic of locations, we can't not mention Iceland. There were also some confusing reports about a bunch of the main cast heading there, but we only saw them at the Belfast airport, not actually in Iceland. So maybe it was another wrong assumption. The only two actors confirmed in Iceland were Kit and Emilia, and now we know that they were only there for a quick romantic scene that we got in the first episode. Although there's one other thing that might have been filmed there, but I'm leaving that for the end. Other than that, we had heard of some filming happening inside of a warehouse. The leakers said that they had filmed the ceiling of potentially the throne room in the Red Keep collapsing, and also that a major character would be found under the rubble. No one really paid much attention to this, and I personally thought that this major character being Cersei was too good to be true. But hey, it turned out to be her under the rubble after all, with Jaime. They were just in the dungeons instead of the throne room. Which kind of sucks because I would have loved to see Cersei dying while sitting on the throne. I feel like that would have been a lot more in character for her. But anyway. Randallstown Forest and Tollymore Forest were also used for Game of Thrones filming. We got a bit excited about Tollymore Forest specifically because they have filmed there before, in season 1. The scenes like when Will finds the chopped up heads of the wildlings in the forest. It's also where they recorded that scene with Tyrion and Jon talking to each other before getting to the wall, and it's also the place where they recorded the Starks finding the direwolf pups. But it looks like the only thing that was filmed there was just that last shot of the wildlings walking north. And that's about it for locations. Now, casting calls. There were a ton of casting calls, most of them as usual not very important, like the northern boy here, the horny Winterfell girls, and some guards. We also knew about this mother and daughter as well, filming with Arya. I actually made a whole theory based on this one leak, it's in the corner if you want to watch it, but the funny thing is that I was accused of putting spoilers in the original title, saying that Macy had filmed with a child, and to this day, I still don't know what it is that I spoiled. Like, maybe they thought it was Jon and Danny's baby, or that Arya would have a baby? I don't know. I did think that Jon and Danny's daughter had been cast, and it was the casting call that I was the most excited about, but it had nothing to do with my Arya theory, and I ended up being wrong about that as well. That girl was not Jon and Danny's daughter. She was simply just one of Varys' little birds. The only major newly cast character that we knew about was Harry Strickland, 
who had less character development than this guy. Fake scenes. We all know how popular the topic of fake scenes has been these past few seasons, and how debated it has been as well. Did they really have the budget to film fake scenes or different endings? The president of HBO seemed to think so, and some actors agreed, but some others highly doubted it. So we didn't know who to believe. Truth is though, there were many ways to quote unquote fake scenes without requiring any extra budget. And this is what we should have focused on because this is definitely what had been happening. As far back as season 6 at least, when they brought Sivelka Kili on set and dressed her up as Shay, even though she had absolutely no scenes in season 6. We've already discussed in this video that this same strategy was used again when they invited the Night King, Jacken, and the Waif to Seville, as well as John. But what I haven't mentioned is what Sophie Turner revealed as well. She said, We shoot fake scenes. We got into costume in Croatia because we know the paparazzi lurk around there. So we would spend like half a day doing nothing. But I wouldn't be so quick to believe her. She may have been trying to throw us off with lies because we know that this scene was filmed in Croatia. Even if she did stand around doing nothing for half a day, she definitely still filmed something for the other half of the day or another day. So yeah, good try Sophie. But this is another example of a good way to create doubt amongst fans without spending any budget. Not filming fake scenes literally, but lying about filming those fake scenes. That's pretty easy to do. We also had some actors who in interviews seemed to genuinely not know if the ending they knew about was the real one. This could have just been them acting and lying, but the other option is that David and Dan sort of Jedi mind tricked them into thinking that what they filmed was a fake scene and not truly the ending. And if you think about it, making the actors doubt themselves does seem like the safest way to keep the truth from spreading. Either way, we don't know who, but someone lied. And it worked. Someone cheated. Now, Kit Harrington was kept quite busy. He wasn't only brought to the dragon pit to trick fans. But I'm sure a lot of you will remember these pictures of John and Cersei meeting that we completely fell for. And now, looking back on them after the fact, it does kind of look a bit staged how Dan is just purposely positioning himself with Lena and Kid for a perfect paparazzi shot. They really tricked us all here. I mean, if you doubted the veracity of this scene, then I praise your sharp brain. But man, I don't remember anyone bringing up the possibility that this could be fake. I think it's clear from my videos that I personally took John meeting Cersei as a fact. And it even made sense. It lined up perfectly with that other rumor about Cersei taking hostages from Winterfell with her Golden Company army. It made sense strategy-wise for Cersei to do this, so we had no reason to doubt that it could happen. But immediately after episode 5 ended, I was like, wait a minute. Cersei's dead, and she never got to talk to Jon. God damn it! But yeah, so this is all proof that fake scenes did not need any extra budget. Except for maybe some plane tickets. Small leaks. While the scene with Jon meeting Cersei was fake, every actor that was in Croatia did end up filming something there. Except for maybe Emilia Clarke, who I believe was there because the staff at the hotel said so. But yeah, Cersei was filming this scene with Kyburn, Sansa and her siblings were filming this goodbye scene, and Jon was not only part of that, but he also filmed this quick shot of him being escorted back to the wall, which we had seen leaked pictures of right here. Another small leak was that the opening scene would be at Wintertown, and we also knew that there would be scenes in the crypts in the first few episodes, specifically one where two characters would discuss Ned's death, and another one where the conversation would be interrupted by a horn. Now we know what those two were. We knew that Theon had filmed with Yara on a ship without Euron, and that perfectly lines up with what happened when Theon saved his sister while Euron was sleeping with Cersei. I actually noticed while watching the documentary that they had created this whole choreography for Theon and his crew killing Euron's men that looked way better than what we got in the actual episode. Like, what the heck? Why would you cut that out? They even showed a guy about to ring an alarm, which would have added so much more excitement to the whole scene. And it would have made more sense. I'm so sad they cut that out now, but anyway, moving on. I had almost forgotten that we also thought we were going to see Rhaegar again. 
The actor who plays him had taken a selfie in front of a hotel where a lot of the Game of Thrones actors stay in Belfast, and he took the picture down very soon after. So that was a clear hint to us that he was filming something. But maybe it got cut out as well, or maybe he deleted the picture for some other reason, we will never know. Oh yeah, do you guys remember that leaked info from Los Siete Reinos that I made a whole video about? Where they said, For a sequence of aerial shots set in episode 3, the Night King's army will slowly advance through the snow amid lit bonfires. By this point, right in the mid-season, the army of the dead will be composed of wildlings and brothers of the Night's Watch. I am now convinced that this was the scene where the Night King raises the fallen soldiers to fight against Jon. There were bonfires, wildlings, and Night's Watch men. And the last small leak that I wanted to bring up was really not a leak after all. I'm talking about the dragon and wolf sigil. There was no new sigil made in the show. This was only meant for the production team, and for that goodbye party. A cool design to probably just put on jackets and stuff. Yeah. Major leaks. There is actually only one major leak I want to mention here, and that is this picture where John is actually stabbing Danny. I mean, I had definitely seen this one before, but for some reason I just never read the rest of the information that came with it. The person who leaked it did say that it was John killing Danny, but since I didn't read that, the whole time I thought it was just a picture of them hugging. Like, even after the first episode came out, I was thinking that this picture was just them in Iceland, filming one of their romantic scenes. Their outfits didn't match perfectly, but I didn't pay too much attention to that until now. When I realized that, holy crap, I had actually seen John stabbing Danny months before season 8 aired, and I never knew it. This is just mind-boggling to me. There were a few other leaks we could talk about, but they weren't too exciting, and the video is getting really long. So... Thank you guys so much for watching, leave a like if you liked it, remember to check out all of the links in the description, and I will see you in the next one! Oh yes, and for those of you who don't follow me on social media, you might notice that I got something on my wrists. Yes, it is uh, a Song of Ice and Fire tattoos. They're dragon glass arrowheads. This one is surrounded by swirls of fire with the dragon heads, and this one is surrounded by swirls of ice with the wolf heads. And please come hang out with me on Twitch, I've been streaming a lot there lately and I will continue to stream a lot more. I will be talking about the Witcher series on there, which I've been expecting for a long time, and I will also be talking about the new prequels and stuff on there, and uh, stuff like that, yeah. Uh, yeah, come, just come.